everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack, and today is another LEGO Star Wars minifigure collection review. This is Leia. She is, of course, one of the most beloved Star Wars characters, and I really like that this collection is a solid 15 because they all fit on this one stand just right. What you can see right off the bat is that this minifigure has quite a few diverse looks. I'm pretty sure every outfit that she wore within the movies has been turned into a LEGO minifigure. Also in this collection, there was a very interesting production fluke with one of these figs, which makes them worth about 10 times as much as they normally would be. But I will let you know when we get to that production flaw, and uh, right now I'm gonna go through the Leia collection chronologically. I'm gonna let you know what sets they came out in and how much they're worth. This very first Leia from the year 2000 came out in the Millennium Falcon set 7190, and she's wearing her white robes from A New Hope. The torso piece printing for the body is very simple, but I think that reflective silver belt at the bottom was probably a bit uncommon for a print in the year 2000. She's got a very simple face with red lips, and of course this is the first version of that very iconic hairstyle molded in Lego. A pretty simple minifig in all respects, and this original Leia goes for around $30 brand new on Bricklink. Not a bad first minifig for Leia, but let's jump up to 2003, and here she gets a lot of new looks. Here's our first Hoth Leia. She first came out in the set Millennium Falcon 4504, and also the X-Wing fighter set 6212. A few of these Leias were also released with Yellow Flesh on the Millennium Falcon, but it seems that version of her release was was very sparse, and Yellow Flesh Hoth Leia doesn't even have a reference number. The printing for the face is the same regardless, and actually that printing on the front of her torso piece isn't bad either. And brand new, this minifig sells for about $10. And moving on, based on this next Leia, you can probably guess which set she came out in. As some of you undoubtedly know, there was only one set that came from this very important part of Episode 5, and this is the Leia from the Cloud City set 10123. You can see the printing for her face has not changed yet, but what makes her exclusive exclusive is this printing on her torso piece. She is not the most notoriously expensive minifigure from the Cloud City set, but not the least expensive either. She comes in at around $50. Also 2003 yields our very first Slave Leia, and she first appeared in the set Jabba's Palace 4480. The whole minifig is all yellow except for the groin piece is dark red, and the detailing for this figure is actually pretty decent. The bit of reflective gold is stylized pretty well, and you can see the printing also shows the negative space for her hips, which I think was a relatively new practice for this year, and is still a technique that is used on minifigs today. This minifig has a neck bracket, which is usually used for something like a backpack, but this one would normally attach to a chain. She's about seven bucks, and interestingly enough, when we jump up three more years to our next Leia release, this is also a Slave Leia. The printing for this minifigure has remained nearly identical. Well, actually pretty much identical. The only thing that's different is the color tone used for the negative space on the body. Also, the brown plastic used for her hair has changed ever since so slightly, and this minifigure came out in the set Jabba's Sail Barge 6210 and goes for around six bucks. One more year up now, we get our next Leia from episode four, and she is exactly like the original Leia, except now she officially has flesh-colored skin. Also, the brown plastic for the hairpiece has been updated like the other ones. She was released in three very big, very expensive sets, one being the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon 10179, the Giant Death Star set 10188, as well as the Tantive 4 10198. This makes her pretty expensive, coming in at around $20 brand new, but remember that production fluke I mentioned in the beginning of the episode? That has to do with this minifig. In the year 2009, some of these Leia's released in the Tantive 4 set came out with this smooth hairpiece. In all respects, the dimensions of this hairpiece are pretty much the same as the original, except it just looks like they didn't press in those little rivets to show the hair. This production flaw, though very minor and pretty insignificant, is extremely, extremely rare. Only produced during a certain production year and released within a very expensive exclusive set, a Princess Leia minifig with with this hairpiece sold on Bricklink goes for $200. That is absolutely ridiculous considering this minifig on its own is around 20 bucks. So really just this smooth hairpiece to collectors is around $180. I cannot tell you how incredibly happy I was to discover this piece in our extra minifig bin. Anyways, production mess ups like this are extremely rare. And for anybody with an old Lego collection, it's always good to know when they pop up. But anyways, 2009 wasn't just full of mess ups. We also got the first version of the Endor Leia. She came out in the Battle 
Battle of Endor set 8038, and she is also the first Leia to sport some printing on her back. The print detailing itself for the torso is actually pretty nice. It shows off a lot of the splotches for the camo, wrinkles in the clothes, and a belt with some equipment. Also, the hairpiece style has now changed for this minifig, and she is sold for around $7. 2010 doesn't yield any new Princess Leia figs, but in 2011, we get these two. This first one is the third and final version of our Episode 4 Leia, and when you look at the body compared to the one that was released back in the year 2000, still nothing has changed. I know white robe detailing I guess is pretty simple, but I feel like at this point something definitely should have switched up. Anyways, you may have noticed that the face though has finally changed for Princess Leia. She has pupils now with some eyelashes, a better print for the mouth, and also the eyebrows. Plus, she comes with an alternate expression. One is a little bit happy, the other one is a little bit unhappy, and also we get a new mold for the hair. The brown plastic is much noticeably darker now, and the mold just shows a slightly different version of the same donut style braids. She was released in the set Millennium Falcon 7965, and brand new is around $25. This next 2011 Leia is our final update from Hoth. She's considerably better than the other Hoth Leia in just about all respects. I like that she has white hands now and white arms, and the detailing for her jacket slash vest looks much, much better. The face is the same new face that we just saw from before, and that hairpiece is the same that we saw from Endor, just now updated in the darker brown. She was released in the set Hoth Echo Base 7879, and is once again a $25 minifig. Moving up one more year, these two Leias are some of my favorites. This one here is probably my favorite. This is Leia in the Boosh disguise. I've heard some people pronounce it Bosch, but I don't know if you ever hear it in the movies, I'm going with Boosh. But regardless, this minifig kind of has it all, and I'd be very surprised if Lego could improve upon this in the future. Here she is with her mask off. She came with this alternate ponytail piece, and I gotta say the detailing for the body looks absolutely incredible. The clothing and armor looks really nice, but the belt going across her hip and that strap going around one shoulder have some very, very fine details. Granted, 2012 isn't that long ago, but the detailing here is comparable to anything coming out in 2016. And on top of that, you can add this backpack build, change the hairpiece with this really great looking mask, and give her her staff as well as a thermal detonator. As you can see, no details were spared here. The mold for the mask looks great. I always appreciate the Lego built accessories for minifigs, like the staff she's carrying and the pack on her back, as opposed to something specifically molded for that. And this print for the thermal detonator that we still see today still looks great. She was released in the Jabba's Palace set and sells for just shy of $30. Our next unique Leia is Celebration Leia, and I lied, I guess this is the last Leia from Episode 4. Though the dress she wore seems like it might have been simple, there's actually a lot of nice fine detailing in this print. You can see some simple designs on the belt, but you can even find some very fine detailing on the necklace. This printing also goes onto the back, which is nice, considering she's pretty much wearing the cape the entire time. And the mold for her hairpiece is actually the same as we got from Cloud City, but this time, of course, in a darker brown. Oddly enough, she wasn't released as some sort of exclusive promo fig, or part of a character encyclopedia book or anything like that, but instead released in the set Gold Leader's Y-Wing Starfighter 9495. And in that set, believe it or not, she did come with a blaster rifle. Definitely a little bit odd there. She is 30 bucks, and let's jump up to the year 2013. And here is our most updated Slave Leia. She was released in the set Jabba's Sail Barge 75020, and I gotta say, the detailing for this minifig is greatly improved upon the first one. The metal molding for her top is now in two colors. One is the reflective gold, and the other one is a slightly darker matte color. That definitely looks a little better, and the detailing from the torso matches up very nicely with everything that's printed onto the legs and groin piece. I like that there's printing on the back now. It doesn't look quite as weird, but unfortunately, it is still usually covered up with this bracket piece. I think the best improvement to this character though is the special hair piece she has. It shows a very long braid going down the back with a nicely placed curve there so you can still attach the chain to the bracket. Also the hair piece shows a few bits of ornate gold pieces just like she had in the movie. She's around 20 bucks and here is yet another very unique Leia minifig. This is Leia from the Ewok Village set 10236. The detailing for the torso is pretty nice, though it's usually covered up with this very large hairpiece. Underneath there is black printing used for the negative space, and a lot of light gray stitches that go up the sides. The hairpiece itself is very, very nice though, with the front of the mold showing a few little braids or ribbons going over her shoulders. Altogether, she's a pretty unique fig, and she comes out to around $13. Our next release was in the year 2015, and oddly enough, this is also an Endor Leia. You can see there's a lot of things different about this Leia, but the first thing I'd like to point out is that we finally have 
a new print for Leia's face. One is a pretty happy smile pulled to one side, and the other one looks a bit more miffed. I like these expressions a lot more. Leia was a pretty animated character, and the previous prints I don't think fit her personality quite as well. The detailing for the body works very well. We have this kind of khaki colored jacket with what looks like an ID badge, as well as a belt. I also like that the print matches up with the legs to kind of show that she's got high-waisted pants. And I feel like this is so often the case with LEGO minifigs, but why do some of the best printing always seem to have to be covered up? She wears this fuzzy camo poncho piece, which is more accurate to her and or look, and she also comes with a blaster pistol and a cookie for an Ewok. She came out in the set Imperial Shuttle Tidarium 75094, and right now sells for around 10 bucks. And here's our very last fig from 2016. And this is kind of the reason why I've been saying Leia the whole time instead of Princess Leia. And that's because our very last one is General Leia. Even though the box she came in labeled her as Princess Leia, I'm still calling her General Leia. And that was the Resistance Troop Transport Set 75140. One thing I like to point out right off the bat is the consistency that the designers kept between the last print for Leia's face and this one. And you can see her expressions match up the same, except they added a few extra lines to show her age. This sort of dark hospital green color that her legs and arms are made of, I think is officially called sand green. And she also has this very contrasting purple torso piece. It feels like it was a bit much compared to what she wore in the movies, but the detailing itself for the torso isn't too bad. I would have liked to see at least some printing on the legs, considering the detailing on the torso is pretty intricate, but ultimately I think she's an okay fig. Regardless, the demand for this fig is pretty high already. This set can be bought just about in any toy store right now, but she is already selling for around 15 bucks. Alright, we just finished off the entire Leia collection. Because she wasn't reproduced quite as much as, let's say, Han Solo or Luke Skywalker, this collection is not oversaturated with a bunch of very, very subtle differences. It feels like Lego really just made a first version of all of her different Star Wars outfits, and then produced minifigures for one updated version of those outfits. Of the 15 minifigs here, nine of them are her in different outfits, which is the first time I think in any of the collections I've managed to review, which has a majority of figures showcasing a new look, as opposed to a redressing of an old look. As for a new Leia minifig that I might want to see in the future, I of course am looking forward to however she might appear in Star Wars Episode 8, but at the same time it would be nice to have an update of her from Cloud City. But that's also just me really wanting a new Cloud City set. All right, that is it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe or give this video a like. And uh, if you've got any ideas about any other LEGO collections you might want to see in the future, you can let us know in the comment section below. I try to keep these videos coming out about once a week. Anyways, thanks a lot again for watching, and we will see you next time at Brickfall. Yeah!